Hey guys, this is Caleb here with Common Motor, and today we're going to be talking about five maintenance jobs that are often missed on your vintage Honda, how to perform them, and some tips and tricks along the way. Symptoms of a poorly adjusted rear brake too tight and you'll find your brakes locking up into a fishtail, too loose and you'll find yourself running at a braking distance. The first adjustment is your rear brake pedal height. There's no right answer, but you really just want to make sure your foot is resting at a comfortable spot. Loosen the lockdown on the rear brake pedal adjustment screw and turn it clockwise or counterclockwise until you arrive at the proper height. Tighten the lock nut back down to set it. Your adjustment screw may differ from where ours is on the CB350, you may find it right under here. Next we're going to set the rear brake travel. Notice how our brake pedal is only moving about half an inch in travel before we lock up the rear brake? That's too tight. Modern bikes use ABS systems to gradually apply braking force to prevent lockups. We don't have that luxury, but increasing the travel of your rear brake increases the range in which you can apply them giving you a longer, safer distance to quickly apply the brakes in an emergency situation. Move to the back of your motorcycle and you'll find the rear brake adjuster nut. Loosen this nut to loosen your brake pedal and provide more travel, tighten it for the reverse effect. If you find you're running out of threads or have way too many, loosen the bolt that clamps your brake pivot arm to the spline shaft and move it a few notches forwards or backwards. Your threaded rod really should sit right at the rear edge of the pivot arm when fully let out. Honda specs your rear brake arm travel at 0.8 to 1.2 inches of travel, or if you're not in the US, 20 to 30 millimeters. Nothing is more appreciated than a functional gas cap after too many gas leaks onto your nice paint job and those nice new pants. Notice how the seal on this blue CB360 tank doesn't look too bad, but the second we start to remove it, you see how brittle that rubber was. Remove the old seal, clean any corrosion or rust off the gas cap with a wire brush. Carefully stretch the new seal over top. You want to make sure your thin side is facing up towards the inside of the gas cap. It will definitely take you more time than you think to get it in there. One more thing worth mentioning is that if you lose the key to your gas cap, they aren't actually keyed to that key. Just about anything will unlock that bad boy. Usually we see the petcock swing in two different directions. It's either clogged and not letting enough gas through, or you have a damaged filter screen inside of it that's letting too much other stuff through. The proper solution isn't to throw a set of inline filters on there, but actually just go ahead and clean out and rebuild that petcock if you need to. Start by draining your gas tank and removing the petcock so you can open it up and inspect it. Its pieces consist of the main mounting nut, petcock body, 
sediment bowl, lever, wavy washer, faceplate and mounting screws, main filter, lever o-ring, tank to petcock o-ring, and the sediment bowl o-ring. This small mesh filter that you see on our reserve line is actually almost always missing on an original petcock. Not to worry, if yours is missing, you still have your actual filter inside the petcock body. Clean all the parts thoroughly before reassembling. If your o-rings or filter are in need of replacement, we sell o-ring kits, filters, as well as whole replacement petcocks for all the motorcycles we support. When reassembling your petcock, make sure not to pinch the wavy washer in between the petcock body and the faceplate so you don't leak. Also, the large nut is installed back onto the petcock smooth side up. You want to thread this back onto the petcock counterclockwise by only about half a turn. Don't thread it any more than that. When you go to screw the petcock back onto the tank, hold the petcock in place and just turn the large nut. It's designed so both sides will then thread into the nut equally, meeting in the middle and sealing on the o-ring. It just needs to be snug, don't over tighten it. You may find that your brass fuel line nipples get pulled out of your petcock body. A few taps with a copper or plastic mallet seats them back in and that's all you need to do. You may not have even known that these were in your bike. They dampen road vibrations to your handlebars, and if they're old and worn out like these, they can create a dangerous handling condition. Loosen the four 12mm bolts that hold your handlebars in place, and push them out of the way. One nut on the bottom of each handlebar riser lets them slide right out so you can get to the bushings. Our set of four handlebar bushings replace the top and bottom bushings on both risers and are also made of a higher quality polyurethane than the factory rubber, so they're going to stiffen up the bars for better handling and last forever. Two things to remember. One, if you have the grounding wire going to your handlebars, don't forget to reattach it. Two, your handlebar clamps are actually asymmetrical. They're meant to be installed with a small dot facing forward and have the front riser bolts tighten before the rears. You'll know you installed them correct if you end up with a small gap in the rear like you see here. These are another easy part you may not notice while you do work on your exhaust pipes. Old and leaky copper and composite exhaust gaskets can wreak havoc on the running conditions of your bike. Unbolt the 12mm nuts on each exhaust flange and the few mounting nuts that are on the back of the mufflers and your pipe should pop right off. Inside your engine, your gaskets may be a little hard to see, Oftentimes they're covered in carbon and uh, you'll have to do a little cleaning and scraping to be able to see where they are. Pry out your old copper and composite exhaust gaskets with a small flathead screwdriver and pop in a new one. When you're putting your exhaust collars and flange back together, make sure you have the curved side facing towards the exhaust flange like you can see us doing here. The thin side should actually face towards the engine and push the pipe into the gasket. But if you're missing an exhaust collar, we have replacements available. Lastly, when tightening your nuts, don't over tighten them here. Just snug them up. The copper and composite exhaust gaskets crush when you tighten your exhaust flange and they squish and conform providing a tight seal. Crush them too far and you'll end up with leaky pipes all over again. Do this right, you can actually even reuse them three to four times. All right guys, that's gonna be five maintenance jobs that we often see people miss on their vintage Hondas. Don't forget to like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here down below. See you next time.